Um, afternoon, everyone. I was looking for a discussion sort of thing, mostly. I'm not an expert on networks or communities. I'm here to talk to you about what I'm passionate about, what I get up for in the morning. Um, so I'm hoping for contributions and that sort of thing. If you want to stretch your legs or something like that, if you've been sitting down for a little bit, I encourage you to get up and um, come somewhere down the front here um, so that I'm not talking to a massive big room. Um, and I also like the idea of the law of two feet. If you get bored, leave. Um, and conferences should be like that, so feel free. Um, my name's John, John Baxter. I am calling myself a collaborative community builder. I've been doing that in different contexts on a local scale in Melbourne and working in South Australia at the moment. Um, and once upon a time, that was very different to what I did in government. I worked in the Auditor General's office in Victoria, um, taking sort of high level perspectives of what government was doing, um, asking questions about whether or not it was doing what it should be, and getting an increasing sense that, well, you know, sort of wasn't, and I couldn't put my finger on why, and neither could my organisation or the people that we were working with. So I left that um, and have since moved and, and trying to work out ways to, to help address some of those problems and address some of those gaps. And the conclusion that I came to, having started thinking about, OK, well, how can I find the answers and then how can I use those answers to make government work better everywhere and save the world, um, is that I can't do that, but networks of connected committed individuals um, can, can drive that sort of change. Um, some of the, the issues that I was looking at are things about how well government deals with complexity, how well government deals with change, how well government deals with an interconnected and increasingly interconnected world. Um, the things that typically, typically get thrown up as wicked problems, um, all that sort of thing, and increasingly unsustainable methods of delivering services to old people, healthcare, and that sort of thing. And they're not being real critical, credible explanations of how we're going to be able to um, address these things in future and not sort of clear movement towards that happening um, in the short term either. So I'm hoping to get a bit of discussion going about um, the potential for networks of individuals to, to um, address some of those. And so the sort of first question I had for everyone out there, if I talk about a network of people working for the public service, working better, what does that mean to you? What, what does that say to you? What examples are there out there that come to mind? Um, and is, is there something you want to throw into this discussion around that? Perhaps we need to ask a slightly more... Oh, no, we've got it. Hi, my name is David Ead. I run the Gov2 Queensland community practice up in Queensland, which we, we really set up to, to try and bring together uh, innovators in government, but more generally people that just wanted to talk about doing things differently or wanted to find out what other people in other agencies were doing. And it started off as quite a small thing and it's, it's, it's kind of snowballed over the years as people have found that it's really their only way of connecting across agencies to network with people that are doing a similar thing. And we've talked a lot about you know, policy development and doing that in a shared way so that we can share the outputs of that. Um, and a bunch of other examples of that. So uh, we've, we've done that in Queensland and we've done that in, in, in really two ways. One is an online community, but we found that an online community on its own uh, wasn't enough. We needed that kind of face-to-face -face meetings in order to build the trust with the people in the communities. So that's how we've done it. We've built an online community. We've added to that a kind of a monthly face-to-face -face, uh, get-together thing. Uh, and out of that, we've obviously then built lots more connections, which are really just about, you know, come and have a coffee with me and we'll talk about this subject or that subject. So that's kind of a, I don't know if that's what the question you were asking, but that's one aspect of what we've tried to do up in Queensland. Um, anything to keep the discussion going is very valuable, and that's definitely a valuable contribution. Thinking about how you maintain a community, um, you have people out there who might be interested in, in something that they can bring together, and how that works. Closer to your mouth. Close to my mouth. Um, one of the things that I thought about, um, sort of skimping on from that, I guess, is that in 2.0 circles, there are communities like that being built, and they're quite good. And I see those sort of growing out of communities of practice and that sort of thing, which is often people with similar, very similar backgrounds doing similar things coming together. And that can be valuable in a certain sense. In a lot of the community building stuff that I've been involved with, it's bringing people together from diverse backgrounds and how those interact and, and combining those to be able to apply for things, at, at things like hacks over the weekend and GovJam over the next couple of days, um, which I'm very excited about. Um, are there examples out there that people can offer of diverse people coming together across the public sector to address problems? Hopefully there's some. Um, 
what about a uh, peer war and a uh, um, and this is I suppose it's about people within similar circles, except it was a public sphere consultation about the future of um, arts in, um, uh, and cultural institutions within Australia last year. Did you see that? No, not for me. So I suppose that was something, and it was sort of breaking across the cultural institutions through the digital humanities, and all of those people got to contribute and talk about policy building based around that to help identify funding for government into the future and the direction which we should go when we're dealing with these types of issues. Perhaps some more couple of more concise questions. Yep. Um, oh, well, I can sort of jump onto a topic, and that was one of the inspirations for um, me being so in interested in connected communities is thinking about entrepreneurship in the public sector, um, experiencing entrepreneurial values of people outside of the public sector, and those being a driver for things getting things happening, social enterprises popping, popping up, and that sort of thing. And that being an approach which is I think at the core of it, it's about individual agency and what I can do within this complex ecosystem, this network that I, I see, that I, I can push things forwards. And I think in the public sector, um, in the public service, or in any large organisation really, we can forget that it's a large complex system and it might be a massive bureaucracy that we can't shift the mountain, but we still do interact with it. Um, it's a system and we have our role in it. Um, we can meet people in it, we can make decisions and we can, can have an influence within it. But being able to understand how to do that effectively requires a, a perspective that is often not part of our day-to-day -day jobs. I certainly, I mean, for, for most of us it won't be, but for a lot of us who want to have a positive impact, it should be something that we're aware of. Um, so I'm very interested if there are examples out there of people have thoughts on entrepreneurship in the public sector and also potentially, especially, um, bring entrepreneurs together to discuss and learn from each other about how to drive, drive positive impact. It wasn't you, very concise. Pardon? No, no, that's right. I'm just wondering, are you, are you asking about whether there's opportunities to do that or whether there's particular fields where you think that we need that to be developed more or whether the, this is something which government really needs to put its weight behind to encourage these sorts of communities to be developed? Um, I'm not sure. It's a tough question, really, or a tough set of questions. Um, I think that from the areas that I've worked in, public administration, looking at the methods and the systems for, for government happening, the, the ways that that happens, lots of people have valuable perspectives to bring to that, but um, the methods we have for informing those don't necessarily reflect the diverse backgrounds that people have, and being able to draw on multiple different areas to contribute to those. Um, communities would be very, very valuable for that, networks of individuals. Um, people coming together in the sort of Gov 2.0 space it's one, is one area that that's happening um, a lot more strongly than in other areas. Does that answer the question? Are people here members of communities of practice? Um, what sort of communities of practice and do you find them valuable? Um, Hold on a second, Kerry. I used to be in a community of practice on website development and content management systems and um, basically it, it folded. So I think with communities of practice you've got to have enthusiasm, effort and, uh, and a problem to solve. And if you don't have that, tough. That's a very good point around the problem to solve. And one of the things that does crop up in community building in a lot of different areas is the sense of purpose. It's not just people come together. It's coming together for a purpose. And whether that's a project or um, a mission, a passion, a set of values, something like that, that's a fantastic rallying point. Um, and that's potentially another question there. What sort of rallying points, if you were committed to um, innovation in the public service, would you think a community might build themselves around? Events like this, we're all here because we have an interest in public sector innovation. What are the rallying points that we'll see people here today um, connecting and, and developing in community? Are you talking around subject matter? Anything. Anything that could gather a community of interest around innovation to perhaps perpetuate it a little bit faster yep. than what it already goes? Any thoughts on that? 
What about establishing an online network? which yep. enables sharing of information between government agencies similar to what Chris was talking about earlier with GovForce, with GovForge. Um, as a medium and a way of going about it, um, definitely an idea, but you still need something to build the community around. As you find with the community of practice, if you don't have a strong purpose um, and uh, an energy about it, having an online platform doesn't work. And one of the curious things about government, Gov 2.0 and that sort of thing is that most of the time there's no particular purpose around it, but I think there's an energy and enthusiasm there on behalf of a lot of the participants about um, the sort of benefits that changes in technology can bring and a vision for how those can be incorporated. Um, would you like to elaborate on that? And if you think there's a sense of purpose um, in the, 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 those sorts of communities and what they rally around? Yeah, I think one of the key lessons we've learned is that Government 2.0 has a per sense of purpose. It, it's, a, it's an umbrella term for lots of different things, and it was only really when we started focusing on specific issues. Queensland, obviously, emergency management and disaster management was one of those key issues, uh, and that's given rise to a, an organisation that's grown out of the group now around that. Uh, other things, that, you know, include... Uh, so, so one part of the group is looking at things like um, records management and compliance in the context of social media interactions with the community. So something, again, it's back to your point of bringing together different groups within government that have a, a problem to solve or a challenge to solve that both of them are needed in order to solve those problems. So yeah, I completely agree with you there. For, for me, Gov2 is, two, is not a cause in itself. It's a set of uh, technology ideas and cultural change ideas that, that has the potential to solve specific problems and it's finding those problems which is key to what we try and do. So each of our sessions is usually around a given problem in government as opposed to saying let's come together and talk about Gov2 because it's really cool. I think there's an interesting challenge there about confusing the means and the end. I think open government is an end and Gov2 has been a means to achieve that over time. I think we've also got to recognise that um, people move on, um, organisations move on, um, circumstances change individually and, and in a group and as a consequence any collaborative activity has a certain shelf life if you like. It's only going to work for a while and I think if you get, um, if you do that well, it's to target an immediate collaboration, get something done, close it down and move to something else. Anyone who's I think worked in IT in the last 10 years and has had to deal, deal with um, waves of getting rid of Lotus Notes databases and Microsoft Access databases and now I suspect SharePoint databases and in the, and in the future um, similar things in, in uh, more open or, or, or cloud-like um, networks realise that collaboration is a cyclical activity, it's not a sort of geometrically increasing activity and we need to address that um, by setting expectations properly at the outset rather than sort of continuing uh, as if people are just keeping going to come to, to the meeting. Fantastic points, thank you. With my thinking about how networks work and the communities that I've been working with, it's been very individual based and that's because the individual connects with the community on their own behalf out of a passion and interest and buying into the values. Whereas in the public sector, a lot of the networking and connecting that goes on is very functional. It doesn't have that. And you often hear about people developing partnerships and that sort of thing. When certain parties move on, they fall apart because the individuals that brought the passion that are what held those organisations together leave, then the legs falls out of it. Um, so I guess the point that I'd make around that is that when you're connecting communities um, around people that have a passion, and that crosses borders between what their actual roles are. Um, and that's potentially increases longevity, I guess, but then, yeah, there's questions about whether or not that's feasible, whether or not people would buy into it. We've got about another three minutes. Three minutes, okay. <laughs> Networking time. <laughs> I'll, I'll um, throw up a couple of things that I've come across that have really sold me on the value of networks. Um, is One of these points is the idea that the future is already here, but it's not very evenly distributed. That was 
it's a few decades old now as an idea. And that is that when we're talking about innovation, we're trying to find the next big thing, we're trying to find out the futures that we're moving towards. But in a lot of instances, we'll, generally speaking, all those things will already be here somewhere. Somebody's doing them. Anything that you can think of, chances are somebody's doing it somewhere in the world. And that really sold me that developing networks where people can share those more effectively is, is a really strong driver of innovation because it connects those things rather than needing to go out there and search and find them. Um, and another thing was discussions about the impact of non-profits and in the sort of not-for-profit sector and that sort of the community side of developing social impact is where some of these ideas are quite strong about working collectively and normally it's um, institution-based rather than on an individual sort of sense. But um, in the network non-profit, um, they talk there about the impact of networks and about the idea that real change, systemic transformation, systemic transformation change at scale um, requires communities of, of connected, passionate, committed individuals to do it, um, that no individual and no organisation either can push against those things and have an, a positive impact there. Um, we've got probably a minute or so left. If anybody has any questions or comments, that would be fantastic. All right, excellent. Thanks a lot for that. Um, Next session being held in this room is social media monitoring. What, how, and why? And following on from that, oh, sorry. Thank you to John for <laughs> Apologies. <laughs> Thank you for sticking with me. <laughs>